copper is the 29th element on the periodic table. And I know I've said this about several other elements, but it is amazing. It and iron were building blocks for society as we know it, and are still necessary for everyday life. Iron takes over the structural aspects more, and copper has some structural appeal, but it's softer, and it also will corrode in the air. And that actually kind of makes it a little bit attractive for architectural design, because if you build uh, the dome of a fancy building out of it, it'll eventually turn green, and it actually is pretty aesthetic, some people think. Um, I actually like it. Um, and but, but copper has another somewhat more important aspect, which is that it is the second best electrical conductor. And therefore, it is used in electrical wiring everywhere. And it is estimated that in um, the developed world, each uh, person, or at least each adult, um, has about 300 or so pounds of copper associated with them. Um, partially because of plumbing, um, because copper has antibacterial properties, natural antibacterial properties, so it's very good for plumbing, and also, but more importantly, for electrical wiring. It is true that copper is the second best conductor of electricity, and the best conductor is the element right below it on the periodic table, silver. So for a lot of um, applications where you want the absolute best conductivity, silver is used. And in certain parts of computers where you want extreme high conductivity and you want it never to corrode, gold is used because gold also has very high conductivity and it won't corrode. And I would say rust, except that rust is iron oxide. So you could say it's rusting, but um, you know it would be copper oxides and carbonates and stuff like that. Copper heads the column um, on the periodic table of metals that are very well known and are used for coinage. Um, the, this column is copper, then silver, then gold, and then um, the element below that, below gold, is a very highly radioactive, um, artificially made uh, element that was made in an accelerator um, called rentgenium. And it is probably one of the hardest elements to pronounce. And actually, um, on the periodic table of videos, one of the viewer questions was, what is the hardest element for you to pronounce? And Professor Polyakov said, rentgenium. I I'm probably pronouncing it horribly, but... Um, they, they had a video about what, what would it be like if first place in the Olympics got a rentgenium medal. As I said, copper, silver, and gold are used for coinage, and copper is, of course, the least valuable of them. And for some reason, I've kind of been into showing off parts of my coin collection in the videos. And I don't see much wrong with that, so I'm going to go ahead and take the excuse of talking about copper to show you some really cool copper coins. Um, so, first up is a uh, cent from uh, 1794. Um, it's very, 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 very worn down, and it's probably worth about 100 bucks today, so it's very hard to tell that it's actually a coin. Um, and even harder on the camera. But um, then I have something that I think is even cooler, which is a half cent. And they're very, very big because, of course, the cent was much more valuable back then and copper was less valuable back then. So those, that, those two factors combined make them very, very big. And... Um, in the late 1800s, they stopped making the half cent, as I think they should stop making the penny today. 
Copper, again, is one of those elements with beautifully colored compounds. It is not quite as versatile in its, in its color scheme as some of the el other earlier transition metals because it's not, uh, its electron configuration isn't quite as malleable. But um, it, still, it still makes very beautiful compounds. And it, unlike some of the earlier transition metals, does have a characteristic color, which is bluish green. Of course, pure copper is one of the few metals that actually has a color, and it's more coppery and brownish, reddish, kind of. But uh, in, as a compound, copper is typically blue. Copper compounds are typically much more colorful if they are in the hydrated form, where there is water in the crystals, especially copper salts. And I'm actually going to show you a very cool experiment where you take anhydrous copper sulfate, so copper sulfate with no water in it, which is a clear white powder, put it in water, and it turns blue because it absorbs the water. Okay, here I have uh, some clear water and a clear white powder, and when I dissolve this clear white powder in this clear water, you would think I would get a clear liquid. Now let's try. Going to mix it around, dissolve it, or dissolve as much as I can of it. And you can already see that the solution is turning blue. Dissolving pretty well. Um, point made though, when it dissolves and when it gets hydrated, the solution turns blue. And this just has to do with the fact that copper has a very high, it has a very interesting um, electron configuration. This, the white powder I had was copper sulfate anhydrous, with no water, that's what it means, anhydrous. And now it's converting to copper sulfate pentahydrate. And the pentahydrate form, uh, the electron configuration is such that when light passes through, the uh, certain wavelengths get absorbed such that the wavelengths get through, that, that do get through, have kind of a bluish tinge to them. So it's not, you know, not just one wavelength that gets through, but many do. But overall, it's, it's a bluish color. So there you go. Okay, I have another very cool experiment to do. Um, and it has to do with copper, because here I have copper sulfate solution. And as you can see, it's quite blue. And just to show you, that's what hydrated copper sulfate crystals look like. Okay, so here's what the experiment is. I have a clear, completely clear solution here, completely clear, and even this solution, which is blue, is see-through. So I have two see-through solutions, and I'm going to pour them together, and you'd think if I pour two see-through solutions together, the result is going to be see-through. Let's see. I call this chemical cheese because you get a solid precipitate, it's kind of cheesy looking, and as you can see, not see through at all, and it's kind of turned a gloppy solid, and there's some bubbling action. This is carbon dioxide. So what happened? Well, I had copper sulfate, as you know, that was the blue, but the clear solution 
that was a solution of uh, sodium carbonate or washing soda and um, when I mixed the copper sulfate with solution with the sodium carbonate solution there was a double displacement um, and they swap places and um, you have then you have uh, copper sulfate and sodium carbonate uh, and sodium so excuse me sodium sulfate and copper carbonate and sodium sulfate is also soluble in water so it stays in solution but the copper carbonate is not so it comes out of solution as, and that that is the cloudiness that you see if I were to take this filter it so I would just have uh, sodium carbonate and then dry it out, mix it stoichiometrically with um, carbon and heat it up, that would actually um, smelt it into pure copper. There you go.